Today we're talking to Assistant Manager Neil uh, Sorvel. We're going to be reviewing uh, the season to date as we're uh, currently in a two-week uh, break because of our non-involvement in the Emirates FA Cup first round over the weekend. Uh, and Neil, our last action was against uh, Oldham Athletic. Um, felt on the day that a draw was, was the right result. You'll have had uh, plenty of time to, to analyse the game because we do that in great detail uh, these days. Uh, what are your thoughts looking back now at that game? Um, I didn't. I weren't particularly impressed with how we played with the ball generally in that game. I know we'd had a we'd had a shape change. We'd had the, um, the Thursday and the Friday to work on it, um, and we looked really bright. And we we you know with the change, we thought we could pose them a number of problems. I think the two goals that we scored were good examples of that. But for me, I didn't feel like we did that often enough in the game. Um, I think we started really sloppily um, and could have been a couple of goals down. Um, so to go in front, um, you know, with the goal we scored, I think that's the first, am I right in saying that's the first headed goal we've scored this season in open play bar, bar Baines's one, which was a uh, still from a corner when we were still in that phase of play, if you like. Um, so nice for that. Um, you know, it was a decent enough goal. I think we could have done better defending on the equaliser uh, for them. Got done on a on a given goal there, um, and then the penalties. Look, it's a it's a dubious one, isn't it? I think watching the game back, Noobs gets took out on the edge of the box with the with the free kick right on half time. He look his foot's on the line, so hey, potentially we you know we could have had a penalty on that one. Um, but then at two one, I thought we were really comfortable. To be honest with you, second half, in, you know, in our shape, um, defensively, you know, they, they're going to get the ball wide and get deliveries into the box. And with our uh, extra centre back in there, you know, with us playing a, a three at the back, I thought we were, we were pretty comfortable for them for a good sixty minutes. So disappointing to, to concede uh, and equalise it at the end. I, it, and it took a, it took a great strike to to level the game up but yeah I think overall um, probably you know you're happy with the point there because they're starting to to improve and probably a draw was a fair result. You mentioned the, the change of shape the big challenge we faced going into the game was the the, the, the loss of uh, Isaac Marriott uh, due to a one match uh, suspension. Lewis Banks I thought came in and did a terrific job. Yeah, he, he was good in there, he, he was nice and steady, like I say, we, we'd done a bit of work on it on the Thursday and Friday in training and he looked fine, he, he looked more than capable. I think he's played in there at, at, at points throughout his career anyway. Um, and funny enough, uh, we changed shape and, and they changed slightly to to what they were doing, they went to more of a 4-4-2, a whereas um, in the home game, um, in the FA Cup the, the week before they played with the 4-3-3, yeah, so, you know, a change in shape for both teams and a little bit of adapting needed to be done out of possession than, than what we'd than what we'd planned for or what we'd worked on on the Thursday and Friday, babe, but that's sometimes the case. The season's going well. We're fifth uh, in the league, uh, over 1.7 points per game. That's got to be ahead of what our pre-season expectations uh, were. Yeah, I think so. Um, you almost look to improve on... On what you've done year by year, that's that, that's always been you know what we've focused on. So yeah, um, to be at the point we are, a third into the season on on one point seven per game, um, you know pushing around the playoff places, is is, um, is a real positive for us. But you know seasons about consistency, and, and we want to maintain that, and we want to stay up there. And if you look at the um, the, the records home and away, they're very very uh, similar. Is 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 that what you expected? Well, usually you, you, your home record's better than your away record, but I think, you know, in terms of the majority of games, how we go out to play uh, and, and we go out to win the game, whether we're at home or away. Um, I think the only one where we've sat back deeper has been the Wheelston game where we're coming off the back of two defeats and, and we're pretty much bare bones going into that game. So that the game plan or the strategy, if you like, was was a little bit different than what we'd normally do. And so important to get a point on that particular day because that's the that was game one of what's turned into at the moment a nine game unbeaten run. If we'd have lost that game, it would have been three defeats on the bounce. So very very important uh, Saturday that. 
Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, they're a good side. Uh, give them the credit. I did one of the few remaining part-time teams in this league. But you know, they're a decent side and, and they, they play a good brand of football. I uh, really like what they do there. Um, so yeah, a, a bit of a different approach. But like you say, you know, you lose a game, you want to bounce back immediately or as quick as you can to regain either a point or a, or three points. Um, and you definitely don't want to go to a a three game sequence um you know and, and lose three games on the spin so that was the outcome of that. yeah look in that game again we were comfortable enough defensively so we showed you know we're capable of going away from home and, and playing in a in a, a different style to what we'd normally do um if if that's what's required on the day so that was good to see as well one of the positives of the season is uh I don't know if there's any other teams in the league, but we haven't had a, a red card in any of our games and we, we haven't had, suffered a red card and that's got to be pleasing uh, from yours and Phil's perspective. Yeah, and I think, um, was Isaac the first, was that the first suspension, first suspension for, yeah. for five yellows um, last week? So, yeah, um, really positive. Like I say, yeah, you, the last thing you want to do within a game is, is to lose a, a player and go down to 10. Um, funny enough, I was, I was watching the Chelsea Tottenham game last night and no matter how many players they went down to, they still tried to keep doing still keep doing the same thing, didn't they? Which was, was a crazy game to watch. But yeah, hey, look, keeping all 11 players on the pitch gives you the, the best opportunity. And it's good to see from our point of view a player who maybe some of our players who, who when they are booked and they might be booked early in the game, they can keep the, the composure and to avoid that um, second foul, for example, or that, that prevents the, you know, the red card. And we had that situation at uh, potentially at, at Barnet where Barnet were clearly trying to get Lewis Banks uh, sent off. So you dealt with that by yeah. making the substitution. Yeah, hey, now and again, you, you might need to do that. That's a good example. And I think we pulled Isaac off last year, didn't we, in the, the Notts County game before the FA Trophy one. Um, but I think them examples, you know, they're few and far between when we've needed to do that. Which are the, the performances that have pleased you most uh, this season? I think as a game, an, an enjoyable one, I think the Aldershot game was um, a really good game. You know, they're, they're one of the improved teams this season. Um, and they're up there pushing around the playoffs. Um, I thought in that game that was a, a real, you know, end-to-end, man-for-man game all over the pitch that could have gone... Either way, so you know, really pleased to to get over the line in that one. And it just shows, I suppose, the quality they've got that the the seven they're up against the uh, a League Two team uh, on Saturday in the FA Cup. And in terms of uh, defeats, we've only suffered two defeats. We started the season with six games unbeaten. We're now nine games unbeaten. Two defeats in between Bromley at home, which was a very tight game, and Barnet. That's the only game where. Um, it was fairly obvious who were going to be the winners from uh, probably the early stages of the of the uh, second half. And yet, we did have a little spell in that game at 1-0 where we were causing them a few problems. Yeah, um, I agree. I think looking at the two defeats that we've had, that's, for me, that's the only game where we can come off and say we've been, we've been well beaten and, and we've deserved to lose the game. Um, I think it was the Ollie one, wasn't it? Ollie Crankshaw one where he's... He, He's had the tattle and he's had the bad injury. A really hot day on the, on the day. Again, didn't quite get our our shape right against their shape. Um, and then we had a number of players who who were below the level they're capable of on the day. Um, so it was it was a tough ask for us. That I mean, the other one we lost, which was the Bromley one at home. Again, hey, for me that was a game we we should have won. A minimum should have got a point from. Again, we were a little bit loose, weren't we? Uh, lost possession over on the far side in, in our own defensive third and but uh, they've done that to a number of teams I think this season Bromley that's that's the, the way they want to play and they were struggling a little bit at the time um, and yet they've used that result as almost like the springboard for their season because they haven't looked back since that point yeah we, we watched them the week before I think they, they were at Rochdale on the, on the Friday night and they, they drew two all and um we were at that game and it was a similar similar type of game to what we had with them. Um, 
albeit there was a couple of sendings off in it, to, to be fair. Um, but, you know, they sat in deep, defended well, looked to it on the counter-attack, and they, they did the same number on Ratchdale as, as they did on us, to be fair to them. And the uh, the game down in Kent on the Saturday before Christmas is one of two games where we're going to be featured on uh, TV, Rochdale at home in January being uh, the other one. And it's... Um, it's it's great for the profile of the club and also it's a, a measure of the success and the progress of uh, of of the club that, that that we've made. Yeah, I like to think so. I think um, the game we were on this season was a real entertaining game, wasn't it? Against um, Oxford, um, chances at both ends. Uh, if you think back to the the Torquay one last season, the four all. I, I don't think there's there's probably been a a better game on than that one for the neutral. So yeah, um, I think they've had certainly had value for money uh, when we've been on there. It's nice to see we're getting that exposure and our lads are given an opportunity to to showcase their ability um, and and show how far we've progressed this season. You know, two really tough games. I think Rochdale, are, you know, seen Rochdale a couple of times play some good stuff, decent side, uh, and Bromley away is is, is as tough as game as you're going to get. So. Both of them games, obviously, hey, we, want, we want to come out victorious, but we know we'll need to be on our on our A game if we're going to do that. How strong do you think the National League is this season? Clearly, uh, Chesterfield are pretty hot favourites and it's going to take a very, very good team uh, to stop them getting automatic uh, promotion, but the, the level does seem very high. Yeah, um, I think a, a lot of the teams who were towards the lower end um, have improved. I don't think you've got I think the gaps closed from the bottom to the top. You know, if you think of some of the the, the teams who were down near the bottom, let's say for example, a file. I think we were very lucky to on the day to come away from from that game with a point um, earlier in the season. Thought they were they looked a decent side against us, and and they're one of the teams who were who were down near the bottom of the table. Um, I think at the top end. You know, there's definitely not a Wrexham and a Notts County in there. So from the point of view that of them two going out of the league, I think the gap's definitely narrowed. And I think it's a nice statistic for us that we're the only team so far who've, who've beat Chesterfield. Um, so that's a real positive as well. And in terms of um, the FA Cup at the weekend, Paul Cook, after Chesterfield's fantastic victory over... Portsmouth was talking about how much non-league football has progressed. Now, this is a, a manager who's managed at a very high level and he's seen the development of uh, non-league uh, football over the last uh, couple of uh, of decades. That's very much the case, I think. Yeah, definitely. You only have to look, I suppose, at, at the shift towards um, to full-time. Um, what we are now, we're on our fourth season. Um second season as a full-time club. I don't think there's there's too many other clubs now who are, who are part-time. Maybe Wheelston, the only one. I'm not quite sure what Dorking are. Um, everyone's now, you know, rightly or wrongly, got got a game plan that suits them. Um, so it's a well-organised competitive league. Yeah, and there's some, there's some decent teams in there. No easy games. You know, you, you know every week you can lose if you're not on your game. So uh, it's, a, it's a good competitive standard. And as a player, you've won the National League uh, with uh, with Macclesfield Town, not Macclesfield FC, <laughs> uh, Macclesfield uh, Town back in uh, 1997. So you you knew at that point what it took to win the league, but, but things have changed a lot in uh, just over a quarter of a century. Yeah, and I think um, obviously back then, I think we won it, we'd won it in 95 and they, they didn't get the ground grading and then we went up again in 90 we won the league again sorry in 97 and they'd done the improvements on the ground but I think at that point everyone was part time I think um, Rushton and Diamonds had just come in the league they'd started to mobilise you know with the, the financial backing I think they even paid good money for for one of our players uh, and, and took him away from us um, so yeah so it's, a, it's you know, it's it's different animal now. You know, with every team full time, but all the teams are a lot more organised, and and that kind of part time element has gone from it. Our next action is is Saturday. Southend United in town at the J Davidson Stadium, kick off uh, three p.m. and uh, they've done remarkably well considering the challenges uh, that that they faced. 
good side, yeah. Been um, been having a little look at them um, over the weekend and at the end of last week. Um, I look to be honest, Steve. I would have say um, if they didn't have the ten points deducted, they'd be above us. Um, even though they're running on a, a minimal squad, hey, there's some good quality in the um, in the squad that they've got. No, it's a, a small squad in the light on numbers, but if they can get the best eleven out, it, it's it's a it's a good squad. You know, they've they've scored more goals than us. They've conceded less goals than us. So, hey, so we're aware it's going to be a a really tough game on Saturday. How much are you surprised by their achievements? Because they've gone into the season with, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 first-team players. They, they've, they've somehow managed to, uh, to, to keep things afloat. And as you say, they'd be, a, they'd be in a playoff position if it hadn't been for the, been for the uh, 10 point deduction. Yeah, um, it's, I suppose it's, it's keeping everyone fit, isn't it? And if you're minimally disrupted, sometimes if you, you go with a small squad, uh, we, we're not the biggest squad, are we? Um, they're a lot shorter than we are in terms of the numbers they've got. But if you can keep that core squad and, and get that continuity, which they've got, but they've got about a one or two players injured, then um, that can help you roll on and, and and that's what they've shown this season obviously that togetherness there even the, like I say with the 10 point deduction um, it's not hindered them um, and they'd be right up there and they, yeah, they're usually a strong side in this league aren't they so um, number of good players in there so we know we've got we've got a tough ask um, on Saturday Has the uh, two week break come at a good time for us in terms of uh, helping us uh, prepare and also in terms of giving giving the players a little bit of a, a break. Um, there's probably two ways of looking at that. Um, in terms of us being a little bit light, and it's allowed us to get a couple of players back in and and train for a couple of weeks. So, for example, George Wilson um, and Regan Linney um, have both completed two full weeks training now, so they're back into the squad. So, from that point of view. Um, two tough weeks training because we haven't took it easy on the lads we've kept the volume high they had the weekend off um just gone see so they had the saturday off but we've just trained as normal last week monday tuesday thursday friday we'll do the same this week so um yeah we wanted to keep the intensity it's allowed us to work on on a few different things uh, in and out of possession uh, that we might introduce at, at different points. So yeah, it's, it's it's been a productive week. But I suppose when you're winning and you're on a nine game unbeaten run, you want to just keep rolling and playing the games. But um, the positive is is that we've got a couple of couple more bodies back now. We're going to be competitive for a place in the team.